Good afternoon all. Well, astronomically it's still winter, but we have ourselves today a really beautiful cloudless spring day. So, I'm out here with the MPPT test rig, which I'd really like to start calling Muppet. But there's probably uh, some licensing reasons why I can't. Uh, battery, and today I've got a 35 watt GU10 halogen on there, keeping the voltage down. And that's because this thing is not yet a charge controller, because it doesn't control the charge that's being fed into the battery. So that's really the next thing that this project needs. It needs to have charge controller functionality. So I'm just trying to remind myself how this works. The A after the word solar means it's in auto tracking. It has that very primitive uh, maximum power point tracking algorithm in here. Top right hand there's that wiper blade that normally sits at maximum power just a little bit below horizontal. So that's waving up and down. Um, no clouds today, so it's a fairly uninterrupted sun. Um, we're getting 60 watts. Now let's turn the pot so that it would be connected directly, and that's 57. So not getting a huge amount of um, benefit from the MPPT today. Let's see what the max that I can get manually is. So yeah, about 60. Let's put it back into auto. It seems that um, there are a few people who have decided to build their own version of this project. And uh, I want to talk to you about one of those in particular. And his name is Ralph. Now, Ralph contacted me back in... January, um, initially asking about uh, resistor values in the potential dividers and use of a slightly different current center, uh, sensor and so on. And then he said, uh, hoping for a quick reply, badly needed. I'm in the Philippines, by the way, Tacloban City to be exact. It's where super typhoon Haiyan wreaked havoc. And uh, this is a picture from Wikipedia on uh, of Tacloban City in the immediate aftermath of um, Hurricane Haiyan. And uh, he also says, slight problem now, the whole circuit eats up about 46 milliamps. And power consumption is something that I am thinking about. It needs to be reduced. Um, so I'm looking at reducing it on the Arduino, turning the display off and various other things. But now he's also sent me some pictures and these are fascinating. Look at that. That, uh, display has been hacked out of an old mobile phone. Um, the main board there, you can see the inductor. You can see the current sensor just next to the chocolate block connector. It's the much bigger type current sensor. And then this is the Arduino built on a bit of uh, strip board down at the bottom. And uh, here's another picture showing the uh, inductor. He's got uh, really good thick chunky wire on there. And also if you see there are a couple of um, dual inline chips there with a lot of capacitors. This one down here, lots of capacitors around that. These are low pass filters because Ralph is a hardware designer and uh, he decided to do uh, quite a lot of work on the hardware, put these low pass filters in to try and smooth the data coming from the various sensors. And uh, here it's been almost four months without electricity here. Made some more mods with the MPT charger, um, switching frequency from 15 kilohertz to 18 because it was getting audible. And uh, here's a screenshot showing that he was getting 178.8 watts out of a 180 watt solar panel. That's not bad. For a 180 watt panel, is this even possible? Anyways, I'm just happy. And uh, well, you know, I'm happy too. I mean, if this thing is generating a good amount of electricity somewhere where electricity is really needed, then, you know, how could I be anything other than thrilled? So I think now with the uh, weather showing definite signs of improvement, I need to be thinking about putting in the feedback control loop in this thing for battery voltage maintenance. So it's important that um, it won't let the battery go over 
the float voltage of about 13 and a half volts because at the moment this unit will cook the battery it doesn't really care about battery voltage its sole purpose is to maximize power but when the battery is up to float voltage say around 13.5 volts then the unit needs to completely switch its focus from maximizing power to controlling that battery voltage and keeping it constant and uh, here I'm going to borrow quite heavily from work I did on the PWM solar contro uh, controller which was about four years ago now but um, the techniques I used in that to uh, control battery voltage I'm going to port over to the Muppet. So how does feedback control work? Well it's the same as what you do when you balance a stick on your hand which I'm having great difficulty doing while holding the camera but I balance the stick on my hand and I have to keep adjusting for when it starts to fall so the point is I'll do this without actually trying to balance it if I hold the stick vertical if I see that it's starting to tip to the right I need to bring my hand across to the right to pick it back up if I see that it's starting to tip to the left I bring my hand to the left to pick the stick back up that's feedback control but negative feedback is very easy to get wrong if for example I see that it's tipping to the right and I overcompensate so that it tips even more to the left and then I overcompensate that you can get this accelerating uh, error where eventually it uh, fails catastrophically so feedback control is about getting the gain right so that small errors are taken out with small adjustments and uh, they call it critical damping when you get it just right so how do you learn about feedback control systems well what I did four years ago to design the PWM5 was I bought this book and it was the cheapest book on Amazon it was only about six or seven pounds it's a pretty massive book and chapter one pretty interesting stuff but once you get a bit further in the mathematics gets pretty nasty but uh, some of the general stuff in these early chapters like these feedback path diagrams was very useful and uh, that kind of got me started and uh, eventually the software model that I came up with was based on this this is a 10 position slide switch and what I did was I assumed that the um, lever there was the PWM position and you have to imagine that this is a 256 position switch and so what I did was I just simply said are we above or below the float voltage if we're above go one step higher if we're below go one step down and so it just kept moving the PWM value incrementally up or down depending on whether we were above or below the battery float voltage and once the algorithm was refined and the control loop was stable then it became the PWM5 um, here's some early ones this is um, one of the strip board types which uh, I was making before I designed a PCB for it which made life a lot easier for assembly this is a very early prototype with a quite horrible label before I got that improved and that's the version that it is today of course it isn't now because um, I'm not making them anymore so the plan now is to make an extremely simple Arduino based PWM solar charge controller which I'm hoping will require just these four items uh, the Arduino Pro Mini a MOSFET and two resistors to measure the battery voltage and develop the feedback control loop for battery float voltage maintenance on this unit and then once that's up and running um, this will be a build your own Arduino PWM solar charge controller and then the software from this will go into the MPPT and that will be the build your own MPPT solar charge controller so yes I mean I know it's yet another project that I'm starting um, but I do feel that the PWM Arduino charge controller is an essential step 
for getting from this, which is not yet a charge controller, just um, an MPPT test rig, my Muppet test rig, getting from this to what I hope will eventually become a proper MPPT solar charge controller.